With the model, materials and lighting in place, we are getting close to being able to create the final output. But before doing so, we should consider the composition and camera settings. First of all, you should consider the look of the background and the ground plane. To adjust the look of the background, go to the environment tab in the project panel. Unlock the environment and go down to the background drop down. Here you can choose to show the lighting environment, a solid color or a backplate image as the background. If you select the backplate image button, you can browse to an image you would like to use. You can also go to the library panel and the backplates tab to find a suitable backplate. I select the studio group and drag the studio backdrop right to the real-time view that automatically adapts to the aspect ratio of the backplate. Now you can adjust the camera to match the angle with the backplate. For this shot though, I'll stick with a solid white color for the background. In the ground dropdown, you can disable and enable ground shadows and you can change the ground shadow to occlusion ground shadow that creates a shadow based on the distance between the model and the ground rather than using the lighting from the environment to do the shadows. I think it works quite well for this type of product shot and I'll leave it on. I enable ground reflections as well. The flatten ground option will flatten the lighting environment in a way that makes it more suitable to use as the background. But for now I'll leave that unchecked as we are using a solid color. For the aspect ratio of the shot, let's imagine that this should fit perfectly to a landscape A4 format. To set that up, go to the project panel and select the image tab. Hit the presets drop down and navigate to landscape and select A4. The relation between the height and width of the real-time view now perfectly matches a piece of A4 paper. With that in place, let's set up the final camera angles. Go to the camera tab in the project panel. As you see, at the moment there's just a single camera called free camera. To create a new camera, hit the add new camera button and give the camera a saying name. Let's call it side view. Adjust the angle in the real time view to something close to a side view and use the numerical input on the position and orientation to adjust the azimuth to negative 90 for a perfect side view. Pay attention to the name of the camera. It now says unsaved behind the name. To save the current position, hit the disk icon. Otherwise, the changes we did since creating the camera will be lost. If you want to revert the camera to the last saved state, hit the reset camera button above the disk. Let's create another angle. Hit the add new camera button. Adjust the angle to something close to a three quarter view. Use the real-time view navigation and or the numerical input as you please. Once you are happy about the angle, make sure to hit the disk to save. Right click the camera in the camera list, hit rename and call this one TQ4 3 quarter. Open up the lens settings drop down and adjust the perspective slash focal length slider. The lower the number, the more perspective distortion you'll get. This will help to create a dynamic feel to the shot. The higher the number, the less perspective distortion. This will give a more calm feeling to the shot. For this I'll go with 70mm. Hit the save current camera disk once again to commit to the changes. I'll use the same process to create a close-up shot of the plug. For close-up shots, adding depth of field can be a quite nice looking effect. Enable depth of field. Hit the select focal point and point and click on the part of the model you want to have in perfect focus. Everything behind and in front of this point will be blurred out. Hit done once you're happy about the focal point. Adjust the f-stop slider to control the strength of the effect. The lower the number, the stronger the blur and vice versa. Let's go with 4 for this particular shot. Hit the save cue and camera button to save the changes. Now we have everything set up, so let's move on and do a final output of one of these camera angles. For more Keyshot learning content, click on one of the playlists below. To make sure you don't miss out on any new content, subscribe to our channel by clicking the Keyshot icon in the center of the screen.